MotoGP is the pinnacle of prototype racing on two wheels and it showcases the best technology that manufacturers come up with for their bikes. But in recent years, we've seen a massive increase and reliance on aerodynamic winglets to make the bikes faster and also to increase grip. If you're new to MotoGP, this probably isn't a big deal as you've only ever really seen the bikes with winglets on them. Yes, the teams won't care about how the bike looks with the aero if it makes them go faster and ultimately wins the race. There is even some fans out there who don't care about aero in terms of looks and performance. But the majority of fans do miss the bikes with little to no aero on them at all. They look to how a MotoGP bike should. Just much cleaner in my opinion more beautiful than the bikes that we see today. So in this video I am going to discuss do MotoGP bikes really need so much aero on them? Let's get into it. Firstly, let's talk about the racing. There is no doubt that since 2016 we have seen every team try something different with aerodynamics and of course the teams with more money will try and push the boat out even further and make the winglets bigger and wider. That is until the winglets were banned in 2016 due to safety, but the teams interpreted the rules and came up with the solution of making aerodynamic fairings. And this is when we seen Ducati really experiment a lot in 2017. But then the rules in 2018 allowed the teams to have one fairing upgrade throughout the season to limit them bringing a new fairing concept each week. And then fast forward to present day and we've seen the bikes go from this to this. The issue that I personally have with Aero and the direction it is going is the limitations it creates with racing and especially the inability for bikes to follow each other really closely in the slipstream as there is so much disrupted air. Not to mention it is also very dangerous as some riders have mentioned that high speed tracks like Mugello and Austria, the dirty air can actually force the bike off wide and offline when approaching the braking areas when in the slipstream. This is something that could be potentially disastrous if not fully addressed. And recently we have seen complaints from fans saying there isn't much overtaking as there used to be, which is something I can't understand but I can't fully confirm if it's due to aerodynamics solely because I don't have the numbers or data to back this up. Of course, it isn't the fault of aerodynamics and winglets but I do put a big portion of the blame on ride height devices making overtaking way more difficult than it should be. If it was me, I would ban ride height devices instantly as I think they don't serve any purpose in motorcycle racing. But that will come in another video, so stay tuned. For me, personally the aesthetic look of the bikes with the winglets, I am not a fan of that. Especially the 2023 bikes that we see. They look so alien compared to the bikes that we've seen in 2016, even before that. My final point really is that does there need to be that much aero in MotoGP? No. Did we need it before in the past? No. Racing overtaking was just fine before that and it can be argued up until 2020 or even later than that that aero fairings weren't as bad for the show and the racing was just as exciting. Of course this video is just my opinion and I would love MotoGP bikes to go back to the way they were without the winglets. And even at the Sepang test recently, we see Marc Marquez test his Repsol Honda without any wings and it just looked fantastic. Maybe one day we will see the return of no wings in MotoGP, but for now, we will just have to deal with it. Let me know in the comments what you think about Aero and MotoGP. And if you could like this video and subscribe to our channel, we would really appreciate it. See you in the next video.